This is part 35 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to pass data to the event handler function in jQuery. Let's understand this with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here we have a button with ID btn click me. Within our jQuery ready function, let's find that button by ID and we want to associate a click event handler. And to do that, I'm going to make use of this on function. We discussed this in our previous video session. So to bind the click event handler, we first need to specify the name of the event, which is click. And when this event occurs, we want to call this function say hello. We don't have this function defined yet. So let's go ahead and define that function. So all we want to do is alert hello. So let's save the changes and when we reload this page and when we click this button, we get the alert hello. Now, when the click event occurs, this is the event handler function that's called. Now what we want to do is pass some custom data to this event handler function. To do that, I'm going to make use of JSON object. So I'm going to pass a JSON object and this JSON object is going to contain two properties. First name, let's initialize this to John and last name and let's initialize this to Doe. So when click event occurs we're calling this say hello event handler function and to this event handler function we are passing this JSON object which has got two properties first name and last name right so this function is going to receive that JSON object. So the next question is how are we going to access first name and last name properties within this say hello event handler function. To access those two properties, we're going to make use of event object. We know that the event handler automatically receives the event object. Now this event object has got data property and that data property will have these two properties, first name and last name. Look at this. So we want to alert hello and then to that we want to concatenate first name and last name property values. So I'm going to make use of this event object that's coming in into this method. So event object has got data property and look at this when I press dot notice we have first name and last name properties. So let's select first name and to that let's concatenate a single space and then again the last name. Alright so let's save those changes. Reload this page and look at this when we click the button we get hello John Doe. Let's bind another click event handler. So I'm going to make a copy of this and let's pass only first name. So we are passing a JSON object here also, but we are only passing a value for first name property. Okay. So here we are binding click even handler twice. So when we save the changes and when we reload this page and when we click this button, we should get two alerts. Look at this. So we get the first alert, hello John Doe. And once I click OK, I get hello John and then look at this last name is undefined. Why is that? That's basically because you know this JSON object does not contain last name property and that's why you know last name is undefined. Let's actually change this first name here to Mary so we know this is a different JSON object. Now let's say we don't want that undefined. If that's the case, you know, you need to check if data is not, you know, if last name is not null. And how do we do that? So, you know, first name, we have it here, but we need to check last name. So what I'm going to do is copy this and put all this in brackets because we are going to have a condition here. So even dot data dot last name, if that is not equal to null, so if this condition is true, then do this. So we are concatenating a space and then the last name. Else, if this condition is false, then to the first name, just concatenate an empty string. So let's save these changes and let's reload this page. Look at this, when we click the button, hello John Doe, when I click OK, we get Hello Mary. We don't have that undefined now. Now let's bind one more click event handler. And this time, I'm not going to pass this JSON object at all. So all I have here 
is the name of the event and the event handler function that I want to call. Okay, so we are not setting, I mean, we are not passing any custom data. Okay, so but still, this is the same handler that we are calling. Okay, now when we don't pass or when we don't set any custom data, you know, data property of the event object is going to be null. So within our function, let's check if event.data, if that is equal to null, because here we're not passing or setting any custom data. If that is null, then what I want to do is alert a message saying no name provided. Else, if data is not null, then execute this piece of code. So let's save those changes. Let's reload this page. And when we click this button, we should get three alerts. First, hello John Doe, hello Mary, and then no name provided because here we are not you know passing any data and here is that example which we just discussed now thank you for listening and have a great day